Hello AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here taking a look at topic 6.2. We're still in the midst of our discussion about Riemann sums. We just recently introduced the two most popular Riemann sums, the left end point and right end point. And we're going to dive into three examples, four, five, and six, that all share a common contextual theme. We're going back to that idea of Sir Isaac and the Newtones, that famous new pop group on the scene and the fact that we have an Instagram picture taken with the band that we're going to share through social media. So that's what this is all about. Riemann sums in context. We're going to take a look at a left and a right Riemann sum using a little bit of a different type of data uh, given uh, through a table rather than a function. And then we're also going to introduce another Riemann sum uh, when we get to example six called the midpoint sum. So let's take a look at example four. So here we are. What we have is a table of values that we're going to interpret here in a little bit. And the stem of the problem reads, Tiffany posts a picture of her posing with Sir Isaac from the pop group Sir Isaac and the New Tones on her Instagram at 9 a.m. The rate that her followers view her picture is modeled with selected values shown in that table above, where time equals zero, t equals zero represents 9 a.m., and the rate is measured in people per hour. Use the data in the table above to approximate the following. And example four says we're going to approximate using a right Riemann sum with three subintervals, the area between p prime of t and the t-axis from t equals 0 to t equal 5. We want to make sure that we include our units of measure. And then we're going to take that answer and we're going to write what it represents within the context of the problem. So a lot of different things that we're going to do here. But the very first thing that uh, we want to get a, our head wrapped around is this Riemann sum that we're going to take. So if you remember from the last video, I always suggest that you somehow identify two things. You want to identify the type of sum. It's either going to be a right, left, later on we're going to see two more, midpoint and trapezoid. And then you want to identify how many subintervals, in this case, three. And it's probably worth noting in this problem that the time interval is going to be pretty special because we don't always assume that this time interval will span the entire data in the table. And in fact, you can see very clearly that from time 0 to time 5, we're only focusing on those four pairs of numbers. So the three subintervals seems to make a lot of sense because as you can see, each of these intervals is very nicely represented as a trio of intervals, as I said before. You've got 0 to 2, 2 to 4, and 4 to 5 that would make up those three intervals. And it's very wor uh, worth noting at this point that those intervals don't happen to have the same distance between them. So what is it that we're going to be doing here? Well, we're going to be finding this area. So I'm going to calculate this area. I want to use the subscript R just to remind myself that this is indeed a right Riemann sum. It is an approximation, so I'm going to put that there. And then we're going to talk about finding the area of three different rectangles. Well, the first rectangle, as you can see, if the t value goes from 0 to 2, we are going to think of that as having a width of 2. From 2 to 4, we can see that that also has a width of 2. But from 4 to 5, it's pretty clear that we had a width of 1. So you can't factor out a common width like we've been doing before. So we're just going to have to bite the bullet and make sure that 2 is multiplied by some length. And it's added to 2 multiplied by some other length. And that's added to 1 multiplied by yet a third length. Length or height is the way that you can think about the value that goes into the parentheses. And that would be the value of p prime. So you look for p prime on the interval 0 to 2, and you think, well, wait a minute. We've got two different values. We have a 41 and we have a 30. Which of the two are we going to use? Well, because we've asked to use a right Riemann sum, 
that means it's the right side of that interval that would get used. So you're going to end up using the 30 for the first height, and then on the interval 2 to 4, between 30 and 54, 54 is the one that falls on the right side interval. And then between the 54 and 26 on this last interval, we're going to use our 26. So at no point does 41 come into play for example 4. And then the rest of this is pretty much just arithmetic. 60 plus 108 plus 26. And if we reduce all that, uh, we would get uh, 194 when we combine our like terms. Now, if we want to think about what is the unit of measure here, well, since we've taken people per hour and multiplied by hours, the hours will cancel and we do get people, which makes sense because the question is kind of addressing, um, you know, possibly how many people ended up uh, actually uh, taking a look at this particular picture. Um, and I think that's really where we are now. We want to make sure that we represent this correctly in uh, the context of the problem. So we've integrated this rate, people per hour, to get people. So these would be the people who actually would have viewed this photograph after she posts it. All right, so we'll just say uh, Tiffany's post, that could be sort of the noun of this particular problem. Remember, noun is part of our NUT acronym when you're explaining the meaning of one of these answers in the context. So we'll say Tiffany's post will be seen by 194 people. Now, I think that does a pretty good job of giving us the noun. We've got some units in there. We just need the time element. Now, it's really important that you somehow use a word like between or during that depicts this interval that starts at t equals 0 and ends at t equals 5. Now, you could probably say t equals 0 hours to t equals 5 hours, but contextually it's a little bit more rich if you equate the fact that at time 0, we know that that represents 9 a.m., and then, of course, 5 hours later from 9 a.m. turns out to be 2 p.m. And I think this does a really wonderful job of explaining what's happening. Tiffany's post will be seen by 194 people. You could say 194 of her followers. You don't have to worry about how descriptive you are there between the hours of 9 and 2. That takes care of our example 4. Now you're going to find out that example 5 reads very similarly. It says now use a left Riemann sum with four subintervals to approximate the area between p prime of t and the t-axis, but now we're going to do so between t equal 4 and 12. And again, we want to use correct units and interpret the answer in the context. So I think it would be best if I clear the board here. And because I'm going to be working from 4 to 12, let's move my camera over to here. Hey, there I am. So between 4 and 12, we're going to start here. And I'll tell you what, I'll use an, even use a different color, for example, 5. Now, let's hope that four subintervals plays very nicely on this interval, because that would be pretty rough if that were not the case. So you can see that the first interval from 4 to 5 will have a width of 1. The next interval from 5 to 6 has a, a width of 1. Ah, but 6 to 3 has a width of uh, 6 to 9, sorry, has a width of 3. And then 9 to 12 has a width of 3, and we notice that we have four subintervals. The problems are going to be written so that the time interval over which you're analyzing the problem and the subintervals should jive together pretty nicely so that you can extract these numbers nicely. So area sub L is approximately equal to, we'll use one as our first width, add it to some length, add one to the next link, uh, uh, length or height, and then we have a pair of threes that are going to get multiplied by some height to be determined. Because it is a left Riemann sum, you probably guessed it, you're going to use these four numbers. 
those would each serve as the height or the length of the p prime curve on the left side of those four subintervals. So we'll just plop down our 54, 26, 21, and 44 in here respectively. And then I'm going to leave the mundane arithmetic for you to verify. This is a problem that could conceivably be done without a calculator. In fact, let's go ahead and do it without a calculator. I hate taking the shortcut here. Um, I want to make sure that you're aware how easily you can add these by by hand. I know the 44 times 3 might be the trickiest one, um, 132. But by the time you start adding these, the 54 and the 26, that combines nicely to make 80. And then you have 80 and 63, which is 143. And then 143 and 132 sounds like that's going to be about, what, 270-something, uh, right? 275, uh, maybe? Is that what that's going to be? See, now I feel compelled to actually add this. Uh, 80 and 63, that's 143 and then add another 132. Let's just make sure 275 is right. So that's what we are approximately equal here, 275. It would be in terms of people, and the interpretation is going to be very similar to our interpretation before. Um, it's still Tiffany's post. She's excited about this picture with Sir Isaac. I mean, who wouldn't be, right? So we'll say that Tiffany's post uh, is seen or will be seen, however you want to phrase it from a um, tense perspective is completely up to you. And we'll put our answer, 275 people. Let's just get our time interval correct here now. And when we start at time t equal 4, we're talking about 4 hours past 9 a.m., which is going to be 1 p.m., and then when you add 8 hours to that time of 4, that's going to take us to 9 p.m. So there's your contextual representation. Seems like more and more people are seeing Tiffany's post. So, you know, I guess that thing's been out for a while. Uh, the the, the, the uh, information is buzzing from all of her followers, and everybody wants to kind of get a good look at her with Sir Isaac. All right, let's take a look at part 6 here. And uh, in this particular part, I think what I've got down below is I've taken this uh, table and I've recopied it here so that I don't have to scroll back and forth. Now we're going to do something a little differently, you guys. So this time we are going to use a midpoint Riemann sum. So let's go ahead and underline that idea of midpoint. Three subintervals, and we're still approximate the area between P prime and the T axis between 0 and 20. Well, which means we're going the whole 12 hours here. And one more time, we're going to go ahead and interpret the meaning of the problem in context. So what is a midpoint? Well, we still have to divide this into subintervals. And we know that we're starting from 0 and we're ending at 12. Now, it doesn't say that these subintervals are equal. So we have to make sure that we don't make that assumption. But basically, if you take 12 um, and, and, and subtract 0 and, and have the span of 12, yes, you could divide that by 3, which would give you the idea that each interval's a width of 4. But I don't think that's going to be the case here. Because we can go to 4 for our first interval, but you notice that you can't go to 8 for your second interval from 4 to 8 doesn't exist. So what you're going to have to do is think about this, you guys. You're going to have to think about dividing this up into um, something a little bit different. Um, if I were to go from 0 to 4, let's say, and then again from 4 to 6, and then from 6 to 9, something very powerful has just happened. And what has happened is that you have revealed the middle of these intervals, the t value that serves as the value that would be in between the two endpoints of that subinterval. 0 to 4 are the inter, uh, endpoints of this first subinterval. 2 happens to be right in the middle. 4 and 6 are the endpoints of subinterval 2. 
5 is right smack dab in the middle, and we can say the same thing about 9 in relation to 6 and 12. So what happens is that we can go ahead and find the width, and from 0 to 4, we have a width of 4. From 4 to 6, a width of 2. And from 6 to 12, a width of 6. Those are going to serve as our widths here. So area, subscript M. We're going to take our 4, multiply it by some height. Add 2, multiply it by some height. Add 6, multiplied by some height. And now to figure out what the heights are going to be, you guessed it. It is going to be the P prime value that corresponds to these circled T values. So 30, 26, and 44. You're just looking for the value that's smack dab in the middle. So we have those three numbers respectively. And then the rest of this is pretty much just uh, arithmetic work. 4 times 30 is 120, 2 times 26 is 52, 4 times, 44 times 6 might be a little bit tricky, uh, I think you get 264 out of that, and if we do this addition, we'll get 436, pretty sure about that arithmetic there. And then one final time, I know it does seem a little bit repetitive having to write the meaning contextually, but I have a firm belief if I can get my students to really practice writing something over and over again, they're going to get very good at doing that. So Tiffany's post will be seen, her single post there, will be seen by two or 436 people. The time interval starts at 9 a.m. on this particular example time zero and it goes all the way until 12 hours later which of course would be 9 p.m. and so there you go Sir Isaac and the new tones got a great pick on Tiffany's Instagram page everybody's excited about it and we were able to use calculus to interpret what this means contextually Anyway, I hope this helps a little bit. Uh, we've got a few videos coming up next that are going to focus on the fourth Riemann sum, which is known as the trapezoid rule. We appreciate you joining, and we look forward to seeing you next time.